Hello and welcome to the fifth grade science curriculum preview. Uh, this is for the fourth six weeks and today we're going to talk about unit four Earth's resources. Uh, as always, we're going to be referring to a couple of key planning documents. So you might want to have these printed out or uh, maybe pause and open these up in another window. Um, we're going to be talking about the pacing guide, um, some pieces in the unit overview, and then the vocabulary on the clarifiers a bit. So unit four um, has eight content standards um, and several of those are supporting standards from fourth grade and third grade. And we've organized those into three mini units on the planning guide or excuse me, the pacing guide. So the first of the three mini units is focused on landforms. Um, landforms can form rapidly or landforms can form slow. Um, and that is going to cover the standards that you see on the screen. Um, the red represents a readiness standard and the blue represents a supporting standard on STAR. You'll notice that 4.7b is in black. It's not officially a supporting standard, but it's really essential to support 5.7b. The second of the many uh, units is uh, soil, sedimentary rock, and fossil fuels and fossil formation. And you'll see the standards that that refers to there. And then the last of the little mini units is Earth's energy resources, <clears throat> where you're going to talk about renewable, non-renewable, and alternative energy resources. And that covers those two standards. Um, with these three mini units within the fourth six weeks, we have five process skills that are partnered and integrated in. Um, most of the lessons that are listed in the unit overview are going to have those integrated in but you'll want to be sure that you specifically talked about and and um, help students understand how to interpret information that is observed um, um, and inferring um, through evidence using models um, is going to be an especially important one as well. Um, all of the mini units represent very abstract concepts that happen over millions of years in most cases. And so that's a very difficult concept for the students to get. So making sure that they have models and they're really looking at the evidence that they see is going to help them make that a little bit more concrete. So here's a screenshot of the pacing guide where you can see those three mini units. And the first of the mini units is 10 days. The second is 10 days and then the last one is seven days and this view is a little bit difficult for us to look at on the presentation so i'm going to take this same information and just pop it onto uh, this screen right here now this has the content standards but not the process skills because i want to just kind of focus a little bit on giving you some tips for maybe planning out the um the three mini units so if you'll focus up on the first unit for landforms you'll notice that there's two supporting standards we're counting 4.7b is really a supporting standard and then there's a uh, readiness standard there and then in the second unit there's a readiness standard in the third as well um, within the 10 days let's just take that first section within those 10 days you're going to want to be spending more time on 5.7b because that's a number one a new um, concept for the students they've not talked about that before, but also because it's a readiness standard. Um, truly do differentiate between what's a review and what's new content. And there's a slide that will really break that down to help you um, and so you know where to spend most of your time. Um, same thing with soil, sedimentary rock, fossil fuels, and fossil formation. That Those are four different topics within 10 days, and there should be some things that are lingered longer on later uh, than some. So 4.7a should truly be a review, um, talking about maybe some of the more difficult things in that um, standard. And I think one of the tougher um, components of that is the um, linking the capacity to retain water or keep water and the ability to support the growth of plants and relate that to particle size, um, which could be part of the properties of soil. So um, reviewing a little bit of that, and you'll find some resources for that in the unit overview. Uh, 5.7D is new content as well, but it's a supporting standard. Um, and so we're gonna be spending more time on 5.7A within those 10 days and so forth. So let's continue and we'll talk a little bit of a closer look um, on how we can uh, use this information to help our planning. 
So within the pacing, um, we'll be looking for um, what we really need to be focusing on with the big idea. So I want to draw your attention to what the unit overview has. Um, the guiding questions really should be used as discussion points for those standards. And then you'll see I've listed their informative assessment. We should be doing lots of pre-assessment and checking in with students so that we know what they're remembering from previous grade levels for those review standards. Um, and then what they're still having some trouble with remembering or um, maybe even understanding that content. So making sure that we con consistently come back to these questions. So here's a little bit closer view of those. You'll see that I've divided up the guiding questions into the three mini units. So as always, I like to encourage teachers to be um, make your own professional judgment in the order, but I really encourage you to stick with these mini units so that you can use the resources that I have to help you out. Um, students really should be able to answer these questions using the unit vocabulary from the clarifier. And I strongly suggest that you throw on a couple of open-ended questions um, in your pre-assessments and then um, continue to bring those up in discussion pieces or maybe an exit ticket and then include them also in your summative assessments at the end of the six weeks. Even if you're doing primarily um, multiple choice, um, asking students to answer one or two open-ended questions is really going to help them connect those vocabulary with the content. So this is just a reminder as well, since we do have these little three mini units, I've divided up the um, approaches to classroom use, which kind of shows you some anchor charts, um, as well as some of the tools and some details um, and how to frame some of this information, because it is a lot of information. And some of it, again, is review and some of it is new. And so this can help you um, kind of frame the, the learning and make some of those connections without it seeming like such a kind of a shotgun approach of lots of little individual pieces of information. And then of course always we have the resources that um, are in the unit overview as well. I have included some of the better review um, resources from um, the third and fourth grade standards. So this isn't everything that's in third and fourth grade for that standard, but these are some of the ones that I think would be helpful for some review. Um, that you could choose from. Okay, so let's take a look at what's new to your fifth graders and then what's review. So we know we're going to linger longer on the new components regardless of if they're readiness or supporting. So some of the new content. Your students have never talked about sedimentary rocks or fossil fuel formation. And I have formation in italics because that is the language of the standard. So we're not talking about the whole rock cycle. Um, and we're talking about what fossil fuels are. They've learned that in fourth grade a bit with renewable and non-renewable resources, but this specifically is talking about how they are formed. And these two are in the same standard because they are formed in a similar way. Also new is connecting a specific landform, which they've had before, but they've not really talked about to the agents of the formation, which is wind, water, and ice. So the concept of an agent doing something in nature, providing wind, water, and ice is um, a force that forms deltas, canyons, sand dunes. Um, that's a brand new concept, and that's gonna require lots of models that your students can make. Um, with some of the tools that we have in the science lab and the lessons have those represented well. Also new is introducing alternative energy resources. Now, if you look at the standard clarifier for this particular standard, you'll see in sixth grade, they actually do research reports on alternative energy resources. So fifth grade really is just focusing on identifying what they are. So really understanding just the basics of what wind, solar, hydroelectric, geothermal, geothermal, and biofuels are. But unless you're really wanting to do a research report that might tie in with your reading te uh, reading teaks or your writing teaks, you can save some time here if that's something traditionally that you've done. So again, the standard says identifying these. The research comes in sixth grade. All of the red ones that I've just talked about are already in the standard. So the blue um, is new content, but it's a, a supporting standard. And that's using fossils as evidence of past organisms and environments. And that's something that the students have not really talked about um, before fifth grade. 
So there's the new content. So let's take a look at the review content. Um, that would be rapid changes to the Earth's surface. So that in third grade, they talked about how volcanoes, earthquakes, and landslides um, change the Earth's surface very quickly. They've also talked about slow changes to the Earth's surface, weathering, erosion, and deposition. That was in fourth grade. So those two things can be uh, nice review pieces. Um, although, again, you'll see that the slow changes to the Earth's surface, the weathering, erosion, and deposition are actually tied into um, the standard that talks about how wind, water, and ice can form landforms. So that's why we have that. Um, fourth grade standard, even though it's not technically a supporting standard, we have it included in this uh, unit. Um, finally, uh, properties of soil is also review content, and that's from third grade. Oh, sorry, and renewable and non-renewable resources is from fourth grade as well. And this is just a note saying uh, 4.7b is good review to have in there. So that's a lot of content. So let's talk about um, a couple of strategies for tackling it all. Um, first of all, um, when you sit down and you're ready to start one of the three mini units, you're gonna wanna pre-assess and throughout the mini unit, you're gonna want to assess formatively as well. So that means taking um, some time to see what they already know and see what they maybe have forgotten or fill in some um, gaps in some of their learning. So let's take a look on the left hand side of the screen of some resources for pre-assessment. So this is where you would maybe want to do a multiple choice 10 question pre-assessment to see what they've got and what they are still missing. So of course, STEM Scopes has assessments um, that are already done, but lots of teachers are finding the pre-assessments um, and the progress monitoring assessments to be a little bit too short or easy. Um, I just wanted to remind you about the STEM Scopes assessment builder um, that is in there. You can really tailor it to the kinds of questions you want. And I also encourage you to go ahead and put in the star released items, a few of those. And those are found in the assessment bank, but they're also under the standards and wrap. So all of those would be great resources um, for you to use for a pre-assessment. As you go through the mini unit, you're going to want to also formatively assess. So you can use any of the resources that you have for the pre-assessment for that as well. Um, and then I wanted to just kind of introduce um, a strategy that it works really nicely with um, an open-ended or multiple choice question, and that's called a sticky bar. And so I have the steps listed there if you're not familiar with this particular strategy. And this one works really well um, after you've done a pre-assessment and you can see, for instance, let's say for instance, um, your students uh, have done a pre-assessment on 4.7a properties of soil. And some pieces of that they've gotten, but some they have not. So um, they're still not really sure about maybe retaining water and what that means. You could maybe do a formative assessment after a mini lesson um, on that, just that particular part of the standard. So let's take a look at what this would look like um, with your students. So you would show a question, um, and that's in this box up here. Um, what agent of change is responsible for creating a canyon? So let's say for instance, on your pre-assessment, students really didn't understand what that was. Um, you would give them maybe some multiple choices to choose from. Uh, is it erosion, deposition, weathering? They think it's something different or an I don't know. And depending on what they thought the answer was, they would vote with um, a post-it note. Um, if you didn't want to give them the multiple choice answers, you could have them write their answer on a post-it note. And then together collectively as a, as a class, you could organize those together and then talk about what their thinking was for those particular answers. So this would allow you to take your information from a pre-assessment, just multiple choice, and then go a little bit more um, deep with your students and talk about what they um, know, what they think they know, and what they don't know yet. And then that can um, impact your instruction for the next couple of days to help them uh, with that particular concept. So uh, as we move forward, just want to remind you again that the vocabulary for all of these eight content standards um, can be found on the clarifier. And remember, I have the terms from 
the standard itself listed at the top, and then any related terms that um, we've either seen on STAR or we know that those have been terms that um, are really important for students to understand to get that particular standard concept, we've got those there. And this is an example I have 5.7a. There's lots of related terms that have shown up that students may have not been exposed to before. And so I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of those. Remember, STEM Scopes has a limited list of vocabulary. So if you're only using the STEM Scopes list and picture vocabulary, you're missing out on, on some other keywords. I, I like picture vocabulary. I think it's a great resource, but it's not a complete list. Um, you want to always come to the clarifier. So we'll come back to the vocabulary and interactive word walls in just a second, but as we kind of wrap up, I want to show you some useful equipment for this unit because we have some brand new things that just arrived on your campus I want to make you aware of. Um, as you talk about or would like for students to look at properties of soil, looking at particle size, um, you might want to have some of these uh, sorting sieves out or soil sifters and we just got some new nesting soil sieves you'll see those um, up here on the top right side we also have some old tray ones too that you might want to take out um, if it's warm enough to go outside and have your students um, sift out some of those uh, you might also use these to um, do some of your activities um, with fossils and fossil form formation uh, also, just a reminder about the smart scopes. Those are great um, to use when you're looking at soil. Um, we have our stream tables that are wonderful for reviewing um, slow changes over time, weathering, erosion, and deposition. Those are really useful for that. Um, we also have examples of, of sedimentary rocks in the lab, and there's the landform model. And soil is in these yellow canisters where you can find um, some different clay, potting soil, uh, gravel. And then um, 5.7D, there's a couple of lessons um, in uh, Ames STEM scopes that say that um, they would call for fossil shark teeth that are optional. And so I was able to get some of those and uh, those should be arriving on your campus um, this week, which is the week before Christmas break. So I just wanted to make you aware of those resources in the science lab. Okay, so I wanted to just wrap up and talk a little bit about um, some of the interactive word, uh, word walls that might go well with this unit. Um, we talked about where to find those terms um, on the clarifier, and I want to encourage you if you haven't jumped in, and I know many of you have shared with me your pictures and I've gotten a chance to come by and see and y'all are doing great things with your interactive word walls. So again, I just wanted to remind you um, that there are a couple of resources out there um, for you to get started on those or wherever you're at to maybe take it to the next level. Um, these are some images that I found from Dr. Julie Jackson's Science Toolkit Facebook page. Um, and you can get there too just by simply um, searching science toolkit on Dr. Jackson's page. And these were just some that I pulled that go along with the um, unit four that we have. Um, I discourage you from trying to do a interactive word wall with every single standard. I'm not sure that that would be feasible. Um, but as you pre-assess and you see maybe students are struggling with some concept, maybe take the one readiness standard that your students are really struggling with and really do a full-blown interactive word wall with that or combine two standards together that are related that would work. So you can kind of search around for those um, examples. And I also wanted to just let you know that um, back on the Canvas page, I've linked Dr. Jackson's brand new publication just came out this December in Science and Children and it's called Claims and Evidence. So this would be taking your interactive word wall and really learning how to do writing with claims and evidence and reasoning with your interactive word wall. So this is kind of the next step. If you've missed out on that, uh, how to start an interactive word wall or you want to review, go back to the third six weeks and I've got a 15 minute video that walks you through how to get started on those. So you can head back. That's the greatness of Canvas is that you can head back and go and get some things from the past or if you're ready to move forward with the claims and evidence 
um, that article's there. And I just want to do a shout out to Sabrina Dow. Her, she's re- listed as co-author on that article. Um, she and Dr. Jackson collaborated with some of the work that Sabrina and her students did over at Mullendore um, Elementary. So great job, Sabrina, and thanks for sharing your, um, your work with everyone. So that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining me and best of luck in this fourth six weeks. And as always, please reach out and let me know how I can support you and your science program. Thanks so much.